Good evening, good evening, good evening. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our midweek gospel explosion, pastoral teachings, and certainly we thank God for you sharing your time with us on today. Well, we are back on Wednesdays. Uh, we've been away for about a month uh, during the holiday season, but we are back January 5th, 2022. Again, we say welcome to our midweek gospel explosion pastoral teachings, and we thank God again for your presence on tonight. Well, we do honor God who is sovereign and supreme to his son, Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, and to the Holy Ghost, who is our comforter, leader, teacher, and our guide, he who leads us in the way of all truth and righteousness. We greet you with Jesus' joy and certainly in divine love. Well, tonight we want to call your attention to uh, the book of 2 Chronicles. That's Old Testament, 2 Chronicles. And we want to focus in on chapter 7 and verse number 14. 2 Chronicles, that's after Kings. First and 2 Kings, you will find 1 Chronicles and then uh, 2 Chronicles. Chapter 7, verse 14. We're going to focus in on one verse tonight. Give you time to get there. If you're there, or when you get there, you will find these words. Very familiar passage of scripture to most of us. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this moment of preaching and teaching. We thank you, God, for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon each of us. We thank you for allowing us uh, to be a part of the new calendar year of 2022. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that has kept us and never left us. We invite you into our midst on tonight. And I pray that you'll give me preaching power and that I will preach and teach with clarity. Anoint us the more, each of us. Anoint our ears, our hearts, minds, and our spirits that we might believe, receive, explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we give you all the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray, and every heart said, Amen. Well, tonight, we're going to speak from these words. What's next? What's next? What's next, America? What's next, church? Those of us who are baptized believers and are baptized believers in Christ, what's next? We have gone through uh, almost two years of trials, and torment, and because of a global epidemic or a pandemic, and things has change in regards to even the church, in our fellowship, in our uh, communication has changed. Um, and perhaps it will never ever be like it once was before. And so many of us may be asking that question, where do we go from here? What's next uh, for us? Uh, what? defined by Webster means to inquire the identity or nature of something. Next means immediately following. So we are inquiring, perhaps many of us, of what's following uh, these months of trouble, trials, and turmoil. What do we do? Where do we go? Well, I think I got an answer for us on today. 
And, and I believe in this word because I have quoted it many times in my in, in other messages. And I have uh, taught from this uh, one particular verse several, several times on several occasions. But I want to remind us as we begin uh, a, a new year. This is the first week uh, in the new year of 2022. And perhaps that question has bombarded us. What's next? When are we going to do this? So, or what's going to happen next? Well, uh, there was a story that I read a few years ago about uh, Benjamin Franklin. And it says that after the Constitution Convention, Benjamin Franklin made a statement that comes up again to each generation of Americans. We have, this is what the statement says, we have given you a republic if you can keep it. Mm -hmm. My brother, that uh, phrase from Benjamin Franklin uh, in regards to the Constitution, uh, it he reminded Americans that we have given you a republic if you can keep it. Uh, let's look at it from a spiritual standpoint. God has given us grace and mercy. He has given us uh, a chance. Uh, the question is, are we going to keep it? The winds of dissent, discord, and deception that has blown across our land in the last 20 years and definite, definitely in the last 20 months have made the answer to that question uncertain. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, we're living in an age where many do not seem to know where they're going and why they're going where they're going. Are you with me? No one can honestly evaluate our country today without realizing that it is in or it is a dangerous time. Just let our minds go back memory lane for the last 12 months. And we have seen so many tragic things, so many terrible things that has happened in our nation and not even mentioning throughout the world, but just America, America the beautiful, land of the free and home of the brave. What is the heart of the crisis, you may ask? What is the heart or what is the cause of these terrible things that's going on in and around us? And remember that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. So that means that we experience the same things. The Bible teaches us that it rained on the just as well as the unjust. So we are, we are, we are in this situation and these circumstances and the question may be asked what is the heart of the crisis is it political is it economical is it sociological my answer to that question is no no it is a spiritual crisis Yes, I did say that because that's what I believe. I believe it's a spiritual crisis. My brothers and my sisters, it is clear that the real shortage in our day is not an energy shortage, but a shortage in those personal attributes which led or lead to true greatness. Our personal relationship with God. Many have walked away from the presence of the Lord. That is the problem in our nation. So then, the next question that you may ask, what is the remedy? 
which will cure America's ills. What is the prescription that will cure America's ills? Well, to Israel, God's chosen people, God suggested several qualities which must characterize any nation which wants to please God. Mm -hmm. There are some things that we must possess, we must have if we are going to please God. If this nation wants to please God, if our community wants to please God, if our church or churches want to please God, if we as individuals want to please God, there are several qualities we must possess in order to please God. So let's see. In Israel's case, in our text, the first thing I noticed that they needed was responsibility. And that's what America needs today. Responsibility. Now, God's people are responsible. Yes, because God chose his people to lead the world. So God's people are responsible. A redeemed people. Because he says in the text, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the, the first clause, if my people, God's people, are responsible and we need responsibility if we are going to please God. We need to be responsible with what God has called, commissioned, and chosen for us to do. God's people, a redeemed people, uh-huh, the chosen, the called out one, the ecclesia, the church, we are responsible. My brothers and sisters, hear me well. In a day when the primary concern of most is with our rights, we must reawaken a concern for our responsibilities. Now, yes, we have rights, and as Christians, we have rights, and the Bible even, even teaches us that sometimes we have to give up our rights in order to win a brother or to win someone. Sometimes we have to give up our rights. Yes, we have rights, but we need to be more concerned about our responsibilities. And the responsibility must begin with God's people. It must begin with the church. When my people, the text says, who are called by my name, accept their responsibility. I believe when that happens, revival in this nation will begin. You see, it's so easy to hide behind the, 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 the elusive they. It's so easy to point fingers at somebody else, isn't it? And that's what's going on in our nation today that, 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 that conservatives and, and, and point their fingers at liberals and Democrats are pointing their fingers at Republicans and, and, and this culture is pointing their fingers at that culture. And see, and, and, and they're saying they, they did it. They are doing it. How can they be so bad? Why don't they do something about the problem? Listen, our pretense is shattered. However, when we realize that the explosion of corruption in our land, the expansion of dishonesty in high office of government, the erosion of morals, 
in our society is happening in an America with a church on almost every corner. My brothers and sisters, America, and perhaps your community, and maybe your church, is where it is today, partly because we as God's people have not prayed long enough, have not loved deeply enough, have not given sacrificially enough, have not preached the word enough, have not witnessed passionately enough. And listen carefully. Change will come only, I believe, when we as God's people accept responsibility. When we accept responsibility for what has happened in our nation, in our community, in our churches, then we'll see change. But we are pushing we're passing the book. We're saying it's the other fellow's fault. But remember, God left this world in the hands of his people. That's why he says in the text, if my people, which are called by my name. So, so, so the first thing that we need mm -hmm, is responsibility. The first quality that we need is responsibility. The second quality that we need is humility. We're going to know where we are and what's next. Then we must have some humility. We must have humility. It's in the text. Look at the next clause. Shall humble themselves. You see that? Uh huh. My brothers and my sisters, that's the reasonable price that we need to pay. And that is to submit, to give up something. He that humbled himself shall be exalted, said the Lord. We must humble ourselves, my brothers and my sisters, before almighty God. Not to the president, not to the, to the congressman, not to the senate, not to our governor, not to our commissioners, not to anybody else but God. How proud we have become of our freedom and how arrogant we are in our prosperity. My brothers and sisters, this nation, on most of this nation, take our freedom for granted, our pride has blinded our eyes to the cost of our freedom. Yes, this country, and I mentioned it uh, on, on Sunday, this country was built on mankind's belief and faith in God. But now, our pride has blinded our eyes to the cost of our freedom. Are you with me? What we have, remember, we have been given. What we have, we have been given. 
And the cost was high. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, the blood of our ancestors is the price that was paid for the freedom of this nation. Mm -hmm. Listen. What happened to the men who signed the Declaration of Independence? What happened to the freedom fighters? What happened to the civil rights leaders? Many were killed for us to be free and have access to many things that we didn't have access to. So my brothers and my sisters, instead of taking it for granted, we must humbly express our gratitude, our thanksgiving to God for this gift of liberty. Yes, you hear it daily that there are some who who are trying to destroy our democracy or to destroy uh, our freedom for selfish whims. So what's next? Where do we go from where we are? Well, I told you a couple of things that we need, a couple of qualities we need in order to order for God to, to answer our cry, hear our prayer. We need responsibility. We need humility. The third thing we need, and it's probably more than anything, is faith. Where has our faith gone? With all the things that's going on in our nation, in our communities, in, 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 in one thing after another, and nobody hardly say we need to pray. We need to go to God in prayer because our country, our nation, our community, our churches even are falling apart. Now, yes, you should have your individual prayer time. But, 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 but when is the leaders of our nation is going to say that in order to get out of this situation that we are in, we need to return to a God who loves us in spite of us. So we need faith. Having humbled ourselves before God, we must pray and seek his face. My brothers and my sisters, we must return to faith as the foundation upon which our nation stands. Which our community stands, which our churches stands, which individuals stand. Because the Bible teaches us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But if we have faith, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Psalm 32 and 12 says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Did you hear that? Our nation is falling and failing simply because God is not the Lord of our nation. Meaning he is not in charge. We don't, we won't allow him to be in charge of our nation because we've gotten smart 
and think that we can do everything on our own and push God out of it. Listen, my brothers and sisters, our only hope, believe it when I tell you, our only hope is God. So let us pray, pray, and pray. And have faith that God is going to hear our humble cry. In this day, in this present age, in our day when America is often too corrupt to be conquering and too comfortable to be courageous, we need to proclaim to the world. That the only way out is through faith in God and that our only hope is God. Should get a witness somewhere. So, my brothers and sisters, faith is the real point. Well, but told you from the beginning that if America is going to uh, be, uh, is going to be characterized as a nation that pleases God, there must be responsibility. Then I said that there must be humility. Responsibility, God's people, a redeemed people, humility, that's the reasonable price. Submit to give up. To humble ourselves. Faith. That's the real point. That's the essential fact. The absolute necessary thing to do. He says in this verse. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Verse 14. He says. Seek my face. We must learn to seek God's face and not the face of some crooked, chaotic politician. But seek the face of God. Are you with me? The next thing and the final thing that we need if we're going to please God as a nation is integrity. Mm -hmm. My brothers and my sisters, we must have integrity. You see, here it is. We must not only turn to God, we must also turn from our wicked ways. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, 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 the text says we, we are to repent as God's people. God's people must repent. We must be in the right position with the right posture, in the proper place, turn from our wicked ways, stop lying. Have you ever witnessed so many people in office, leaders of our country, leaders of our government, lie so much? Well, let me take a sidebar here because the word of God says, a liar will not tarry in his sight. But they're, uh, they are lying 24 7. Uh huh. Stop lying. Stop cheating. Stop killing. It is amazing that we want to save the baby in the womb, which is not bad. It's a good thing. But then we kill folk who are walking and talking among us every day. Killing is still killing.
integrity. You see, my brothers and sisters, the greatest enemy of our nation is not what attacks it from without, but what corrodes it from within. Are you with me? Yes. One historian pointed out that 16 of the 19 great civilizations that have passed away from the beginning of time have done so because of internal decay. Great nations like Rome, great nations like Russia, mm -hmm. they passed away because of internal decay. Are you hearing me today? Listen, another historian, a French historian said, America is great because America is good. That's what he said. If America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. That was one French historian. Listen, we must understand that we're not good and we'll never be great without God being the leader of our nation, of our communities, of our churches, of our families, of ourselves when God is not number one then we will never be good or great yes the question is for us today to think about I just want to cause you to think today because you know we may you know we may be sanctimonious or we may be churchy and all of that but we're still living in a country that is decaying and so my question, my title, what I, how I penned this message today was from the title, What's Next? And many of us don't have any idea what's next. And many of us don't care what's next. And many of us don't know who to go to to find out what's next. Where do we go from being evil and mean to each other as a nation? Where do we go next? How do we resolve the situation? Where do we go from here, church? Where do we go from here, Christian? Where do we go from here, brother, sister? Is it God's way or the world's way or your way? Well, this text teaches us that if we would possess some qualities and if we would repent, that we will be rewarded. Let's look at the text. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, God's people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, humility, and pray, and seek my face, faith, and turn from their wicked Ways, integrity. Then, here's the reward. Then will I forgive their sin, 
Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's the promise that God made to Israel. And that same promise is given to us, the church, who are believers in what God did through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Mm -hmm. so, so let me ask this question one more time. Is it God's way or the world's way or your way? What's next? Is, are you going to try to live this life your way, the world's way, or God's way? Well, I conclude on tonight. If we do it God's way, according to this verse, we as the people of God will be rewarded. That gives us the reassuring power. It says, then will I hear from heaven. God will hear. Many of us, we've been calling him, but perhaps he hadn't heard us because we hadn't approached him properly. But the text says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, then God will hear. It's so good when God hears and answer your prayer. But, but the text says he will hear. Then will I hear from heaven. God will hear. Not only will God hear, but God will help. It's in the verse. Then will I hear from heaven, here's the help, and I will forgive their sins. Not only will he hear and help, but the text also says he will heal. Is there anybody in need of healing today? But remember, my brothers and sisters, is that those of us who are baptized believers in Christ we are responsible. It's not the government. It's the church. It's the call out ones. It's the body of Christ. We are responsible. And so when we assume responsibility with humility and faith and integrity, then we will hear and we'll get help and he will heal Yes, heal our land. It's just that simple. My brothers and my sisters, God's way will lead to bountiful blessings. The world's way will lead us eventually to the junkyard of nations. The junkyard of communities. The junkyard of churches. Yeah. You will find churches today, and churches is not the building. Church, those of us who are baptized believers in Christ, we are the church. And, we, and, and you will find churches today that, that are in the junkyard because they have put aside God's way 
and picked up the world's way or their own way. God is a jealous God and he will have no other God before him. So, what's next for you? What do you see God doing in the midst of all this chaos, all of this evil? What do you see God doing next? Well, according to this verse, if it's going to be a change, in our society, then we as the people of God are responsible. Those of us who are called by his name, we are responsible. We need to pick up our responsibility. We need to pick up our duty and do what God has told us to do and be humble about it. Humble yourself. Don't be arrogant. That's what's wrong with the church today. That we have too many arrogant people. Once you get arrogant, arrogant, you find yourselves drifting away from God and drifting away into your own world. Hmm. I don't know about you and I don't know how you feel about it. But I have decided that I will always go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone that the builders rejected. Go to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Because he said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, go to God in prayer and pray for our nation, pray for our governmental leaders, Pray for our community leaders. Pray for our church. Pray for our church leaders. Pray. God still answers prayer. But remember, we need to have responsibility, humility, faith, and integrity. And if, you, if we possess those things, God said that I will hear, then when I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins, do we not need to be forgiven? As a nation, we need to be forgiven for all of the ungodly stuff we have done to one another. God said, if we would do what he asked us to do, humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, then we will hear. He will hear us, he will help us, and he will heal us. What's next? Seek the presence of the Lord. He's still the answer for the world today. He's still the head man in charge. He's still sitting on the throne. It doesn't matter how bad it may look. My brothers and my sisters, God is still in control. I know you probably asking, where is God and all of this chaos and all this torment is going on? 
He is in the same place he was when the world or when men was crucifying his son. He's still on the throne. And we as children of God, we as the church, we as Christians need to understand what the word says. And when chaos comes, and trials and tribulation comes, we must remember to go boldly. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace. And you may find help in the time of need, in the time of trouble. That's why I made up in my mind that when darkness appear, when dangers, danger is all around, I go to the rock of my salvation. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this word on tonight. We thank you for allowing us to come together. We pray that you allow this word to sink deeply into our hearts and minds and spirits as we wonder what's next, as we wonder where do we go from where we are. We pray, God, that you will release your power and your presence into our lives, that we might know what's our next step. Yes, we know that we're living in a cruel and mean world, but you said in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we're depending on you to see us through. And we hold on to your unchanging hands. And we ask that you hold on to our hand as we go through the many trials and tribulations of our lives. We pray, God, for the church, those you have called to be a mouthpiece for you, those who you have called to be hands and feet for you. We pray that we'll be strengthened that we'll be empowered to do what you have called us to do, that we can carry out the assignment that you have given us collectively and individually. We pray for knowledge and understanding, oh God, that we will know we have a sense of what's next, of where we go from here. Pray for those who may be sick and shut in, dealing with maladies and sicknesses and diseases. We pray, God, for healing. Healing spiritually, physically, morally, and emotionally. We pray for those who are backslidden. Pray for those who do not know your son, Jesus Christ, in the part of their sins. We pray that they would make a decision on today you're backslidden to come back. If you don't know Christ, to get to know him because he is the answer for the world today. And if you're watching and listening today and you're not saved, not been saved, you've not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, we want to give an opportunity to do that. And if you're not saved and you need salvation, if you'll just pray this prayer with me, Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He died for my sins and you raised him for my redemption. Lord God, come into my heart and make me a new creature, a new creation. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. I believe if you prayed that prayer on tonight, according to the word of God, you are saved. And I want to encourage you to connect with the Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church so you can grow as a Christian. You can grow as what you have believed and what you have confessed. And if you need us for anything, need our church, feel free to call. Our phone number is 850-575-0818. That's Innovation Baptist Church. Or you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org. And someone will be glad to help you along the way. Well, my brothers and sisters, thank you so much for sharing your time with us on tonight. If you need a replay of this message, you can log on to our website. You can get the replay and you can share it with someone else that you think may need this word on tonight. What's next? Where do we go from here?
So until Sunday, 9.30 a.m., our worship experience, 9.30 a.m., uh, please join us then. Until then, stay safe, stay strong, and be blessed is my prayer.